I bid you welcome or a welcome back. First of all, I have to say that this project went quite off for real, but on the flip side, there is a lesson to be learned from it. If you've seen one of my recent videos and remember what I said in it, yeah, I just literally broke everything I said there for this project. Because of that, the video itself also ended up quite different from what I had in mind. It starts as a quick one to practice working without a proper rendering, just the line work, flat colors, some extra layers for the shading and maybe a little bit of rendering. Then this turned into a 20 plus hours piece, <laughs> 10 of which was just really me trying to fix my own mistakes, but still. See, when I started working on this piece, I was experiencing some crippling anxiety, so I just rumbled for about 40 minutes while trying to somehow make a passable sketch. I cut it down as much as I could, only including the most important uh, things that I said, but it will feel a little bit weirder that uh, getting to the sketch stage is possibly the longest segment of the video. I wanted to say this beforehand because I would have felt that I'm deceiving people in a way if they expect me to show the later stages of the process. So so it's more of a sketch and chill with me video than my regular ones with an actual whole process as at the second half of it. But uh, let's end the disclaimer and start already. I bid you welcome or a welcome back. I will be totally honest. I don't even know what's going on anymore. <laughs> that that sounds so bad. Um, okay, let me let me let me phrase this properly. So I'm in the middle of making multiple proper, nice, amazing projects and I want to edit a lot of amazing videos but I'm just in such an anxiety trip right now I just cannot even touch anything without just feeling worse. So I'm not sure what I'm expecting to happen here, I'm like hoping for some miracle or something. I asked myself the question, if I just could do anything, create any digital painting right now, what would be the thing that I would create. And uh, the first answer that just came to mind, I want to create something kind. Just that, that thing, you know. Good luck working with that. So I came up with an idea. Yes, I'm starting a new project and it's gonna be awful. Hopefully the good kind of awful. Now, <laughs> let me bring this up really quick. So for uh, those two of you who have seen previous videos of mine, you might have seen that I actually like fanfictions, which is uh, the do whatever you want with that information category. And lately I've been uh, reading a few Wednesday uh, fanfictions. And this is the thing that I'm reading now, a story titled Dolls Kill by Visha Dream. First work from uh, this person I've ever uh, read. And my idea was is that I want to make just a quick fan art of this this fanfiction. It's not going to be anything special. I haven't even read the entire story, so I don't know what uh, the ending is going to be like or, or anything, but I just want, uh, want a quick picture that kind of captures the essence of this fanfiction. And that's what I'm going to do today. So the this story in a few words. Wednesday's family ends up being killed, their house is lit on fire and everyone dies except for Wednesday pretty much, but the catch is that she's uh, mortally wounded or like almost mortally wounded and she's convinced that she's going to die and with her last uh, effort she manages to do some magic that transports her soul into a doll that she had. After the whole uh, building is burnt down, some looters find a few valuables and one of them is uh, this doll that just didn't burn properly and they take it uh, to a thrift store where the brothers of Enid end up buying it as a gift for her birthday and for a long time Enid has no idea that uh, Wednesday's soul is in this doll. In this version they have never met each other and Enid is uh, not a werewolf, she's just a regular person. So Enid is just a random teenager who ends up receiving the haunted doll 
that has Wednesday inside and in the earlier parts of the story Enid's dog ends up dying and she feels really awful about it and she's going through some uh, really bad times and uh, upon receiving this doll this doll kind of just becomes her uh, emotional support doll and then slowly she recognizes that the doll has something uh, something going on with it that uh, strange things are happening around this doll and she just tries to figure out what's the deal with it and eventually you know learns about the whole tragedy of the Adams family and I don't want to do any real spoilers so essentially that is the the setup of the whole story and what I want to do here is I want to create a really quick just little character portrait of Enid holding the Wednesday doll and this doll is uh, described as a porcelain doll and also resembles a Wednesday so the doll is gonna have these uh, Wednesday hair pieces I don't know what's the what is the proper face for that and what I want is just Enid sitting on her bed and holding this doll while uh, she's she's crying over everything or or something <laughs> that that sounded awful. Yes, my my whole idea is I just want a picture of Enid holding Wednesday as a doll, and that's that's gonna be the the whole piece. Her foot is almost hanging down from it, like this. That's the most magnificent foot I have ever made in my entire life. Dog paw print pattern and some stripes, and that's gonna be the tapestry. Is it what's what's called tapestry. I'm not gonna google that. That's gonna be the wall decoration. Just uh, a nod to the story that uh, Enid had a dog in this version. Enid's color palette is gonna be something like uh, pinks and like peach color and and then stuff like that and Wednesday is just gonna be this uh, awfully desaturated but still uh, a lovable looking little doll that Enid is holding there uh, it always starts like this I just sit down to start a really quick new project and it goes out of hand and because I spend all the time in the world and all my energy with just pouring it into one a random little piece. I already hate it. <laughs> okay, no, I don't. And I want her to look like sad. That was a really amazing description. I want her to look sad. <laughs> I, I cannot, cannot come up with better explanations. I'm just, I'm just coping with this recording at this point. I was thinking about like having a bow in the neck of the of the doll, but the middle of a of the bow. It's just gonna be a school. That's a really amazing and descriptive school. And she's gonna have like a like a sad face with big eyes, uncanny, almost human-like nose, and almost like oversized braids in her hair. I'm pretty sure there is some sort of cartoon depiction of Wednesday that is uh, more fitting for this kind of design. I, I deliberately don't want to look any of those up. I just want to kind of come up with my own. And I want, uh, I want the doll to be like big. Okay, so her arm would be something like this. And the doll gonna be something like this. There was a segment when uh, Enid was carrying the doll in this uh, harness that she had that was designed for carrying uh, real babies. By the way, I'm just pushing and pulling lines here. I don't even know what I'm doing at the moment, but it hopefully will at least be a nice base that I will only need to fix up later. Really, really sad with a lot of tears. I should also put some some music reference to this picture, maybe like a phone with some some earbuds here. Like one of the things in this story is uh, it has a lot of song lyrics in it and every single chapter title is the title and uh, author of a song. So there would be a, a music player just going on this this little screen here. That is the, the shortest cable <laughs> that was ever designed. Actually I had a cable once that was like that short. <laughs> And then it was like a, like a really quick temporary cable and I had a cable extender for it. 
but it was like five meters long or something so i was walking around with like a ball of this size of cable in my pocket <laughs> while i had that that must have been really goofy and i had it still like wrapped around my entire body another time just to make my little cable ball in my pocket even smaller than that yeah i i i had some budget setups over the years maybe this could be an actual reference to some song i will fast forward here a little bit what i did in this whole segment is i just cleaned up the sketch a little bit and i modified a few parts mainly the arms that are wrapping around the doll and i also made like the first somewhat accurate version of the legs that will be modified many times in the future i just wanted to include this little silent segment of me trying to figure out some of this stuff because i found it to be interesting and uh back to my past self uh, i just checked the description of the doll so she had a uh, black hair tied into braids on the other side of the head uh, the, the, the made out a dress starched white color and cuffed sleeves that attached to a black dress with a tiny school pattern avoidingly white stockings and scuffed black shoes also there's a mark on the forehead of the doll originally then it fades away but I, I i want to add it because of the story it's a circle with a triangle in the center with a smaller circle inside of that reddish brown ink yeah and it uh, immediately disappears after uh, in it noticed it i would say that that is the most accurate depiction that we have of the doll so i'm going to keep that in mind i changed my mind on the raggedy n look i want uh, i want to kind of keep the black little eyes but i want like more realistic proportions and there will be a proper properly like three-dimensional nose and a three-dimensional uh, mouth to an extent and maybe the doll could have like an annoyed look like she's kind of rolling her eyes back a little bit because in it is just hugging her like crazy or something like that or maybe i would just leave the expression blank because that was kind of part of the story that the doll never had expressions but it was communicating with a lot of body language in the first place we will figure it out as we go i kind of want to just keep this bow with the giant school because uh, everything else would be just a little bit too hard to depict on this scale and also i i don't want to overdo the whole design i will temporarily remove the braid so i will see everything around also i kind of want to raise in its hands a little bit so they are kind of like hugging the the doll as close as possible so the top of of this this uh forearm is like almost reaching the the little bow with the school on it and also uh the hands uh, had fingers on them i remember that from the story i want to give like a little little bit of detail hands to this doll make the shoulders look a little bit less goofy of course something like this okay let's let's check the proportions a little bit because i always mess them up for the first time so this is one head two heads three heads this should be around the belly button area fourth head should be uh, the start of the legs so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to stretch this guide for myself a little bit something like this i want to just squish the head together i always make this mistake where i really elongate especially the head Head, but i kind of do it with the whole head not the whole head it with the whole body also she's looking downwards so the chin is gonna be lower something like this maybe even like this push the torso together a little bit so she doesn't feel that elongated and since i've been squishing her even more than how much she's squishing the doll i want to just upscale the entire character look at the 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 little phone how big it is compared to her it's like the entire size of her head and also it's a single bed 
I I hope that it was not described as a bigger than single bed in the story, but if it was, then sorry about that. There we go. That's much better. I'll be able to do some nice details on the on the doll as well. Also, by the way, if you haven't tried this trick, I always get tangled in uh, like making a bunch of really big brush strokes because in my mind this kind of feels like already really zoomed in but i would just scribble something right next to it in like this size and it's kind of just giving you that idea like uh it's gonna be an anchor for you to see that okay this is like how small my little brush strokes should be so i will not overdo them i mean not over uh, size them i will just add them properly like this that face is the most messed up face that i've ever done now that's better i kind of want to keep the whole head much more round than a real person that's a that's a huge eye but you know what i i don't know what i was trying to go for so yes let's uh oh i just what what am i even doing <laughs> Where did I place this thing? Come on. Eh. Somewhere like there. Somewhere like there. That sounded really... I don't know how to finish that sentence. Mm -hmm. At this point of the process, I was still under the impression that I will do about a one hour of rendering in the end at max. Thinking about it, there was a clear point where I diverged from the path when I decided to try some things out on top of the entire image, then it just got out of hand and I started rendering the whole thing. First I was sticking to my plan, clean up the sketch until it's mostly the way I want it to look in the end, then I did the flat colors where the overall coral palette was completely done, then I colorized the lines themselves. Because even if I don't want any rendering, I prefer having uh, deep red lines for the skin of people and matching colors for all the parts of the environment instead of having one color for all of them. Um, I must try that one out one day as well, but not this time. Then came a few layers of shadows and lights, and there was one extra thing I tried at this point. See, ever since I started traditional drawing, I've been more and more aware of how much I rely on digital tools like layer modes and transform tools, so I made this piece with a hybrid technique when it comes to layer modes. I did use multiply mode for the shadows on the skin of the characters, but I wanted to hand mix all the colors of the environment, which was uh, challenging on its own. But I feel like like for the non-organic matter, I'm even having an easier time picking all the colors I want to use myself instead of making the program mix those out. I used some multiply really briefly much later when I was adjusting some of the colors and at one point I did boost the saturation of some parts of the environment, especially the pillows that were a bit desaturated. Also, I've been promising to make that video about my process of rendering faces. This won't be that one, but I used my regular process for that using a combination of normal, multiply and hard light modes. As I said, at one point I switched into my rendering heavy process out of habit really and uh, I did a huge mistake of not making a proper sketch for myself. I'm not talking about line art, just a sketch that is already anatomically correct so I won't have to fix my own mistakes in the rendering phase which is exactly what I was going for in the last video, then failed to do so this time. I have no doubts that many creators can make it work really well the way I do now without any real struggle. I just recognize uh, that I'm wasting way too much energy doing it this way when I don't use rendering as the final step to enhance what I have and uh, give the final look of the piece. Instead I attempt to compensate for all the shortcomings I made before the rendering stage. You know there's this thing when if you can do something but only with some aid then uh, you can't quite do that thing. The same goes to what I'm doing here, being able to make a good piece without rendering must be my new baseline instead of being able to do something only through rendering. Semi-realism is based on simplifying things, or at least that's how I see it, 
But what I do is overcomplicating that simple idea. I've been doing the same since I started in 2017, and if I'm unable to get past this, I'll never be better, only more efficient in the wrong process with a higher success rate of fixing my own mistakes instead of never making them in the first place. Let's get back into the piece. There was that phone on the bed. I said I'll add some reference to that one and I decided to put in the album cover of When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go by Billie Eilish. I mean a really simplified version of it. The story included a bunch of lyrics from different songs and I'll be honest, the only one I recognized was Billie Eilish and actually she was like the most important important one of the musicians who appeared. If anyone read this story, I'm sure they would understand why I'm saying that. Also, yes, between recording the first part of the video and uh, finishing the piece, I did finish reading the story. And I want to share a few spoiler-free thoughts about it after the status report. Okay, I wanted to say a little status report. Uh, you know, there's this saying that Clever people learn from the mistakes of others. Now, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's about the 666th occasion of me making this mistake. I was just minding my own business, making, uh, you know, making the, 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 the picture out of layers the way I, I, I always start. And... At one point I just started rendering on top of everything and uh, I don't even know how I feel about this. Um, I crossed over 8 hours with this picture and I cannot tell if I'm making progress or not anymore, especially with the face. So what I will do is I'm going to take a break from the face and I'm going to hopefully go through roughly the entire picture outside of the face and uh, and we will see how it goes or something i feel like i i'm saying that we will see how it goes way too often when i'm just trying to cope with the fact that i don't have anything better to say so honestly when i when i say that i hate this image what i really mean is i hate myself i'm just projecting that hate on this picture um these eyes these are just so hideous poof they went into the into the garbage can and I will figure out what to do with them once I once I get some proper distance from this face because it's not going to work any extent if I'm if I'm just bashing my head against this wall. Let's do something with Wednesday because she's been neglected more than how much she was neglected in the story. So let's do something about it. Taking a break from the face, I went into working on Wednesday and then in its body and the whole environment and despite my worries, uh, they progressed a whole lot within a short time, especially after I fixed some huge issues. Especially the face of Wednesday and in its legs, those looked really bad for far too long. I also added a blanket and the window to make the environment less empty and later I put some speakers on the wall as well. Other big change was remaking one of in its feet, then later I moved uh, even her entire body so the other foot is partially hanging down from the bed. Now I wanted to say a few words about the story itself, though skill by Wish a Dream. I know not everyone watching this is involved in the fanfiction rabbit hole, this is a story based on the Netflix series titled Wednesday which came out in 2022, a spin-off series and a sort of a sequel slash reboot of the Adams family. Originally the two characters Enid and Wednesday are roommates in a school for people uh, with uh, supernatural powers. Wednesday being a seer who has visions about violent events both in the past and the future and in it is a werewolf and the two characters are polar opposites in many ways and of course the people of the internet immediately started shipping them meaning they make fan art and fan fictions or other stories of the two of them together many times as romantic partners as well. This story is what we call an AU or alternative universe where the characters are the same but the story and the world 
world changes around them and they have a completely different story about how they meet each other and what they do with each other. A few things I wanted to really point out in the story without spoilers is how we see in it taking care of her dying dog at the beginning for some time and how both the experience of losing her dog and her relationship with her family affects her, then Wednesday arriving as a doll impacts her immensely. She carries the doll around and talks to it all the time so we learn so much about what she feels. Then as she finds out who is inside the doll as Wednesday slowly regains her ability to speak, we see their relationship slowly developing, only after in it experiences uh, strange things happening around the doll of course. Then they embark on a journey to find out who killed Wednesday's family and to take revenge. There are many cool scenes like at one point uh, Wednesday hunts down some of the conspiracy members in a forest by making a golem-like creature with her psychic powers and other times she gets literally mailed in a box to infiltrate the homes of people. Still possibly my favorite part was uh, when Enid convinces her to go on a trip to find uh, the graves of her family members. Then they just uh, see that there's a carnival going on nearby so they go there uh, to have some fun together while Enid is carrying Wednesday in a harness. You know it's the kind of uh, scene when uh, it kind of totally goes off rail and it kind of just don't even seem to belong in the story but it's really important uh, from the perspective of the characters and it is uh, an important part of their relationship. There are so many things I could mention, the only other thing I want is uh, beyond this somewhat goofy horror adventure, both characters have their own story and their own development uh, they have to go through, involving both of their families and their expectations and by the end they both have to come to terms with what they want and what their families want for them. It's a bit of a coming of age story with supernatural elements. Like many fan fictions actually, this story is highly political. The story contains some unapologetically left-wing political messages directly into your face and I love it for that. I mean yes, the fan fiction community always had a female and queer majority and as far as I've seen it's also true for the Wednesday fandom and it also has has many younger fans, pretty much the most effective combination you can get. So if you don't agree with the morals of the story, well, change your mind, duh. Okay, I went off rail, said teenage girl and creepy doll go hug and cry, cute stuff. Okay, this is gonna be a more quiet segment than, uh, than the others. Why is it mirrored? There we go. <laughs> now I was working on this picture yesterday for a few hours and I was having a migraine attack but I, 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 I still managed to make some nice progress on it. I still haven't completely recovered and I didn't even sleep well and I, I right now can't even tell whether or not I'm really sleepy or I'm just uh, I'm just just feeling the after effects of the of the migraine attack I, I just wanted to sit down and do at least a little bit of progress on this one and we are at the stage when I really want to think about what else I want to put into this picture because I want to wrap it up really soon I really want to fix this part of the eyebrow it's like strangely lit and also I repositioned these eyes I don't even know how many times during this process but I want to just really quickly try out and just cut this apart and uh, try to properly like figure out how the eyes are standing the best I know this is something I should have figured out in the very first sketch stage and I wouldn't be suffering with it now, maybe next time. <laughs> the other thing is that this nose is almost facing towards us, we should only see a little little bit of the nostril and also Emma Myers has these uh, rather wide nostrils that are also not curving upwards. So I will like rotate this nose a little bit. I want to really faintly modify the lips because the upper lips are kind of too big. Other than that I don't really want to touch the face. Maybe it's just a little little bit of detail on this part of the hair. Also like this thing looks weirder. I really want to decide what to do with this. Kind of squish this hand a little bit so it's like not so bulky just roughly clean up the face of the doll do a little bit of a finer rendering on the hands 
at one point I totally uh, redid this whole foot and it was really for the better. Like this was the, the previous one and it's like, uh, okay, it, uh, it could work for a habit, but not for, not for Enid. This one is much better. What I want to try with this other one, I just really quickly want to rotate it because it's like right now this plane of the of the foot is facing towards the the camera and it would work if this uh foot was literally just going off the bed like as if this was the edge of the bed should i make this the edge wait for a second i should just make that place the edge of the bed question mark i remember that was part of my original sketch where is it this thing that the the foot was really close to the edge and it was like partially hanging off the edge of the of the bed so she's like not just sitting there in the middle also now that i think about it this bed is rather wide for just a single bed make this the edge of the bed or more like more like this and i think we should uh modify the other side a little bit as well so it would be like this wide that feels more appropriate maybe i want to do something here i don't know maybe just i will find something in the story that i can make a quick reference to uh, one thing that i want to try out so yesterday i was talking to a few people and somebody actually guessed that this picture takes place somewhere in scandinavia and i said that no it uh, was meant to take place in the united states and why why do you think that it was you know, Scandinavia. And the answer was uh, pastel colors. The presence of pastel colors gave off the impression. So what I want to try out, I just make a little note for myself. Saturation. If you look at any of the accessories of Enid, everything was really bright and really saturated and not pastel colors at all. And I didn't really recognize that. Maybe just the presence of the more muted color palettes can give off the impression of a much more like moodier and sadder scene. At the same time, if I ramp up the saturation for most of the picture, then Wednesday is going to look much less saturated in comparison, so it might actually help the whole uh, composition a little bit more so i want to try it out by all means and i think that will be pretty much everything so i want to still like clean up these parts for example but i don't want to modify anything like i repositioned the legs yesterday again multiple times and again i had someone looking at them really briefly and pretty much the two of us came to the conclusion that okay they still look a little bit weird especially like this joint and how this whole leg is connected to the pelvis but that was that was the point where i said that okay i i think i messed around with it enough and it's like not that visually disgusting <laughs> and that was like the point when i said that okay I, I i think i really put enough effort into these legs i don't want to just mess around with them they are serving their purpose really well and i'm like mostly satisfied with how they look maybe i want to like modify this part of the leg a little bit like this part of the thigh might be a little bit too wide i don't really want to modify the whole body shape that much i want to add some sort of stripe pattern to this blanket really really simple stripe pattern but you can do this cool thing with it when when you follow the folds and you're kind of like there will be two of these really close to each other here because of that fold this could go like that you know how it goes just to break up the one continuous shape of this blanket and yes now after my magnificent 13 minutes of recording that i i won't even know how to cut up cut down to like two minutes or something let's continue with the video Okay, the last rendering part took way more than I wanted, like 6 or 7 hours, but what I did manage to do in the end was actually turning it into a piece that I'm proud of. I did all the modifications on the piece that I wanted and some extra as well. One thing beyond that I wrote down for myself was putting Enid closer to the left side of the canvas. I cut her out altogether and moved her so she's not exactly in the center but more at the 
third of the picture and alongside it I also moved the further side of the bed so it doesn't feel so huge anymore. Modifying those parts of the face and even a bit more was really necessary and something I spent way too much time exactly because I went into the rendering stage without making it properly as a sketch first. Sad little accidents am I right? <laughs> but it ended up working in the end and after fixing up Wednesday she easily became my favorite part of the entire image. I really was afraid that she will be underwhelming but I feel I have the opposite now. The only thing not exactly the way it was supposed to be is how she looks much more cute and kinder than what she was always described as since Enid's brothers originally bought her as a prank because they thought Enid will be afraid of her and now she looks friendly and nice by default. Maybe some people will prefer her this way though. I have to mention one person who personally helped me with this piece. There were more people who looked at it and gave some feedback from multiple Discord servers and I thank you all, you know if I'm talking about you. And there's one person I wanted to mention by name for helping the most and it's Sean from the YouTube channel Artbook Addiction. He happened to be online on Discord and we talked a bit and he gave me some feedback about my rendering, namely how I could improve this piece by adding some harder edges and more saturated shadow colors, which are two issues I'm painfully aware of and uh, I still struggle to address them properly. So it was uh, really valuable feedback for me when it comes to this particular piece when someone exactly pointed out the shortcomings that I always have and pointed out how exactly I could fix them on this particular piece. I didn't end up fully implementing everything the way he said it. I was somewhat overwhelmed and I was not willing to change too much after so many hours of working on this. So I toned down everything I ended up modifying but nonetheless this really pushed my piece in a be much better direction and I hope I'll be able to do better next time with some extra confidence in what I exactly could do differently in my rendering. The bigger changes at this part uh, towards the end were adding stripes to the blanket. Otherwise it uh, looked like a giant piece of mush just at the end of the bed. Someone in a voice chat even thought it was some monster crawling on the bed which is uh, extra amusing for me. Then I added some extra details to the pants, the line on the side where it is uh, stitched together and some extra wrinkles that are formed by uh, stretching the fabric and I also added uh, two speakers above the bed. I mounted them to the wall to make them feel less empty. And for the logo on them I added a little moon as a reference to Mooney the dog, just a really subtle reference. I think it's better than if I added a poster or something to the wall. I was thinking about adding a shelf with stuffed animals above the bed. There was uh, even a segment in the story that described the different animals on it and it could have been a good addition that would have taken so much more energy. So with a heartache I ended up cutting it. The shelf with the animals was not above the bed in the story but I was thinking about changing it like how I added the visible mark on Wednesday's forehead while it uh, disappeared right after Enid held her for the first time. I say if this video received receives 100 views and 10 nice comments out of which 5 ask for it specifically. I will make another piece of fence day sitting among the plushies as described in the story, okay? It would be fun to make. I almost forgot I completely remade the visible hand. It looked like as if it was made as Wednesday's little doll hand instead of a human hand. It was so worth it to remake it completely. That was one of the best changes for the entire piece. And with that we arrived to the final piece. I know that this video was a bit of a mess because I had no idea what I was going for and then I kept making a bunch of mistakes through it and uh, I, I, I actually wanted a really short video with this with this project, like a 10-15 minutes long video, but nah, that's, that's not gonna happen in this channel. So huge respect for anyone who watched it this far. I'm being rude because I haven't even watched my hair for this recording like look at this like what 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 what's, what's this thing yeah 
I will attempt to wash it while the video is rendering and it was an amazing project totally by accident and I'm glad how it turned out and I really hope that next time I will do things differently because it's just awful how I executed this whole thing. If you are interested in uh, reading the story yourself, I will leave a link in the description. It is on uh, Archive of Our Own and it's available completely for free. And it has a teen and up rating, so it's essentially like the PG-13 rating. And the only thing is that this story is restricted and it means that it can only be viewed by those who are registered to this site. And in order to register you need to get an invite and there is a wait list for the invites. According to these uh, estimations if you send a request right now it's gonna take you more than one week to receive an invite. If you want to read it I'm going to leave uh, the link to this page as well in the description so you can go and send your invite and maybe look around the site archive of our own check out the other works of this author or other authors as well now i will go and finish editing the video and then i will send it to the author as well and i hope that they will appreciate it and thank you very much for watching have a nice day create something even if it involves uh, 20 plus hours of work while you could uh, make uh, realistically in about six only if you paid attention and focused on it properly. And uh, in that case, I should actually say to have a nice week. <laughs> but uh, either way, most importantly, don't forget to have fun while doing that. Farewell. I wanted to say one other little thing. So I've been talking to a few people recently and uh, somebody told me that, you know, after I mentioned uh, my YouTube channel and uh, the statistics that I have and, you know, the overall uh, low amount of feedback that I receive on my videos, somebody told me that, uh, hey, just remember that there are people who watch videos, actually there are like more people who watch videos and then they don't comment anything and don't give uh, any feedback, but they appreciate your work uh, just as much. So I wanted to say that if you are any of those people who watches this and uh, doesn't uh, write comments or, or anything, I just wanted to tell you that I'm very thankful that you are here. I can't even express how much it means to me, so thank you so much.